The first month of the year is March. The first month, look at there, table of time, Nissan or Abib, March and April. Second month is April to May. Sivan is May to June. Tamaz, look at all the way to the end, guys. There's 13 months. 13 months. The first day of the new year is March. V Vader is the 13th month. Sunday's the first day of the week. The Sabbath is Saturday. Days of the week. First day of the week, Sunday. Second day, Monday. Look at that seventh day or Sabbath, Saturday. Can you believe this? These are two things I heard recently on TikTok. Oh, there's 13 months in the year. And I was like, what? Then they start thinking about stuff like, okay, what does October mean? Well, that means the eighth month. What does December mean? D deck 10. It's the 10th month. September, what's sep? Seventh. And it also, Nov, November. What's Nov? Nine. It's the ninth month. And now I, I have it right here in my 1775 Bible. Sunday isn't the Sabbath, guys. Sunday's the first day of the week. The Sabbath is Saturday. Wow. This is the type of discovery that'll make you question everything you thought you knew about time. Imagine flipping through an old Bible and finding out that our ancestors didn't just live by a different calendar, they lived by a completely different rhythm of life. 13 months in a year starting with March and Sunday as the first day of the week. This isn't just some quirky historical footnote. It's a revelation that could change how we view our connection to the universe and our place within it. And what's even more surprising is that this 1775 Bible, translated from the original Greek texts and based on even older sources, suggests that the knowledge it presents could stretch back to ancient times, possibly aligning with practices from centuries or even millennia earlier. When I saw the content of that 1775 Bible, I was hooked. Sunday is the first day, March is the first month. That's not what any calendar I've ever hung on my wall has shown. Suddenly, it felt like I had found a piece of a puzzle that I didn't even know was missing. It's almost like stepping into a parallel universe where everything you thought you knew about time is flipped upside down. Who decided that January should kick off the new year? Why does the week start with Monday when ancient wisdom clearly placed Sunday at the helm? This 1775 Bible shows us that our current understanding of the calendar might not just be a little off. It could be completely disconnected from the rhythms that once guided our ancestors. The Julian calendar, established by Julius Caesar in 45 BCE, was one of the first major shifts away from the lunar calendar, systems that had been used for centuries. Designed to align with the solar year, the Julian calendar originally started with March, which makes sense given its alignment with the natural and agricultural cycles. However, this system was adjusted yet again in 1582 under Pope Gregory XIII, leading to the adoption of the Gregorian calendar that we use today. But this change wasn't just about improving the calendar's accuracy. It was driven by the church's desire to standardize Easter celebrations rather than to stay true to ancient celestial alignments. Different cultures, however, had their own systems that might make our current calendar look a little strange by comparison. The ancient Egyptians, for example, used a calendar of 12 months, each with 30 days, plus an extra five days at the end of the year that were outside the calendar, considered sacred days. Their calendar was more aligned with the heliacal rising of the star Sirius, which marked the flooding of the Nile, a critical event for agriculture. Similarly, the Maya civilization used multiple calendars, including the Sulkin and Hab, which synchronized every 52 years in what they called the calendar round. Time for these cultures wasn't just a series of numbers. It was an intricate dance with the cosmos. Think about it. A 13-month calendar that starts with March, perfectly aligning with the spring equinox, a time when life is renewed and nature reawakens. Imagine if our year actually began when the world itself begins anew. What if our days flowed in harmony with celestial bodies and cosmic rhythms, instead of the industrial grind of modern timekeeping? This isn't just about historical curiosity. It's about uncovering a way of life that might be more in tune with the natural world. Let's dive deeper into this astonishing revelation. The 13-month calendar isn't just a quirky relic from the past. It's a reflection of how ancient societies stayed in sync with the lunar cycles. Each month corresponded to a full lunar cycle, resulting in a year that was naturally aligned with the moon's phases, not the forced fit of our 12-month system. 
The lunar calendar, which was used by the Hebrews, Egyptians, and other ancient cultures, often included a 13th month to keep in sync with the solar year, known as an intercalary month or leap month. This wasn't just practical for agricultural purposes, it carried spiritual significance too. For example, the Hebrew calendar still occasionally adds a 13th month, Adar too, to ensure that the lunar calendar remains in sync with the solar cycle, thereby keeping Passover in the spring as required by biblical law. Similarly, the ancient Chinese calendar used a lunisolar approach, adding extra months when necessary to align the lunar months with the solar year, maintaining the integrity of seasonal festivals. Ancient cultures, from the Celts to the Egyptians, used similar systems to stay in harmony with the natural world, planning agricultural and spiritual activities around these cycles. This way of life feels miles away from the rigid structure of our modern calendar, which occasionally requires a leap year to correct itself. Today, our calendar feels rigid and somewhat artificial in comparison. We force 12 months into a solar year and pretend that it all fits neatly, even though it doesn't. We add an extra day every four years, and every now and then, scientists remind us that we have to tweak the length of a second to keep things from spiraling out of sync. What if this ancient 13-month calendar is actually the answer to all these inconsistencies? So why did we ever switch away from this seemingly perfect system? The shift from the ancient 13-month calendar to our current system was not just a gradual evolution, it was driven by deliberate decisions by powerful figures. One of the most significant changes came from Emperor Constantine, who not only shifted the beginning of the year, but also moved the day of worship from Saturday, the Sabbath, to Sunday. One of the things Constantine did was because he wanted the pagans to worship God, Jehovah, was he moved the day of worship to the day of the sun, which is why we now worship on Sunday. Because Sunday became a pagan day. This was a move designed to consolidate power, align Christian practices with the sun worship that was widespread at the time, and further cement the Roman Empire's influence. Constantine's reforms were part of a broader strategy to unify the empire under a single Christian doctrine, which included aligning major Christian holidays with existing pagan festivals to ease the transition for converts. By making Sunday the Day of the Sun a day of worship, Constantine effectively merged Christian and pagan traditions, which helped unify his empire, but also meant altering ancient timekeeping practices. This wasn't just about making the calendar easier to use or more accurate, it was about control. The way we measure time affects how we live our lives, how we worship, and even how we perceive the world. Constantine's reforms weren't just about practicality. They were about aligning timekeeping with the political and religious priorities of the empire. And in doing so, we may have lost touch with a more natural, harmonious way of living. Another thing Constantine did was move the day of Jesus' birth to December. Because Tammuz died on December 23rd. And it was believed, because Nimrod, his father, was a hunter, it was believed that Nimrod would be reborn in his son Tammuz. And his son Tammuz's birthday was December 25th. And what you would do on Tammuz's birthday was you would set up a tree. Deuteronomy 1621. You shall not plant for yourself any tree as a wooden image near the altar which you build for yourself to the Lord your God. It was believed that in order for Tammuz to rise again as his son Nimrod, you'd have to go to the tree, you'd have to cut down a tree from the forest, and you'd have to put balls on it. And the balls were symbolic of testicles. The tree was symbolic of a phallus. Jeremiah chapter 10, look what it says. Hear the word which the Lord speaks to you, O house of Israel, thus saith the Lord, do not learn the way of the Gentiles. Do not be dismayed at the signs of the heaven, for the Gentiles are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are futile. For one cuts a tree from the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with an axe. They decorate it with silver and gold. They fasten it with nails and hammers so that it will not topple. Here's where things get even more intriguing. Each day of the week is associated with a celestial body. The sun, moon, Mars, Mercury, Jupiter, Venus, and Saturn. 
This association isn't random. It's a reflection of the belief that these celestial forces influence the energies and activities suited for each day. By beginning the week on Sunday, ancient societies place the sun, representing light, beginnings, and leadership, at the forefront. The week flowed from the starting point, with the Sabbath on Saturday serving as a day of rest and reflection. By shifting the first day of the week to Monday, we disrupt this flow. We start the week under the influence of the moon, associated with emotions, reflection, and introspection, rather than action and new beginnings. It's a subtle but profound shift that affects not just how we structure our weeks, but how we live our lives. If you've ever felt like the modern work week just doesn't fit, maybe this is why. We're out of sync with the celestial order that our ancestors honored. In the English language, the days of the week retain traces of their astrological and pagan origins. For example, Tuesday is named after the Norse god, Tew, Mars, Wednesday after Odin, Mercury, Thursday after Thor, Jupiter, and Friday after Frigg, Venus. This blend of Norse, Roman, and other cultural influences shows just how deeply intertwined our current timekeeping is with ancient beliefs even if the original context has been largely lost. But the calendar isn't just a tool for organizing days, it's a tool for organizing societies. Throughout history, the calendar has been used to align civic, religious, and agricultural activities. In ancient Rome, the calendar was tied to the phases of the moon and the cycles of the sun, but also to the needs of the empire, such as when taxes were due. By altering the calendar, rulers could exert influence over their subjects, dictating not just the timing of festivals, but the rhythm of everyday life. The Roman calendar originally started in March, not January. This was a natural choice. March aligns with the vernal equinox, a time of new beginnings. But over time, the calendar was restructured. January and February were added to the start of the year, pushing the new year back into the coldest, darkest days of winter. Why? Part of it was political, Aligning the calendar with the solar year made it easier to manage the empire, but it also disconnected the calendar from the natural cycles that had guided humanity for millennia. Moreover, the transition to the Gregorian calendar was met with resistance in various regions. For example, Protestant countries were initially reluctant to adopt what was seen as a Catholic reform. England and its colonies, including America, did not adopt the Gregorian calendar until 1752 nearly 170 years after its introduction. This delay caused a discrepancy in dates and calendars across Europe, illustrating the complex interplay between religion, politics, and timekeeping. Our ancestors didn't just observe the passing of days, they built entire cultures around the cycles of the sun, moon, and stars. Structures like Stonehenge and the Pyramids of Giza are aligned with celestial events, serving as both calendars and temples. The solstices and equinoxes were not just dates on a calendar, they were moments of spiritual and agricultural significance. Imagine living in a world where the beginning of the year coincided with the vernal equinox, when day and night are equal and the world is poised between darkness and light. This balance, this harmony, is reflected in many ancient myths and spiritual teachings. By aligning the start of the year with this natural event, our ancestors were doing more than just marking time, they were participating in a cosmic rhythm that connected them to the universe. This alignment was crucial not just for spiritual reasons, but also for survival. For instance, understanding the timing of solstices and equinoxes allowed ancient peoples to predict seasons, which was vital for agriculture. The Druids, for example, are believed to have used Stonehenge as a solar calendar to mark solstices, guiding planting and harvesting times. Similarly, the ancient Romans celebrated the festival of Saturnalia around the winter solstice, a time that symbolized the rebirth of the sun, the ripple effects of a misaligned calendar. So what does it mean to live by a calendar that's out of sync with nature? It means more than just the occasional leap year or losing track of the lunar cycle. It means losing touch with the very rhythms that once guided humanity. Our ancestors used the calendar to mark not just time, but the flow of seasons, the cycles of planting and harvest, and the phases of the moon. In today's world, we've lost much of this connection. We live by the clock, not the sun. We schedule our lives by a calendar that doesn't reflect the natural world. 
And in doing so, we've lost some of the harmony that our ancestors found in the alignment of time and nature. This isn't just about nostalgia. It's about rediscovering a way of living that feels more authentic, more connected, and more in tune with the world around us. Rediscovering the lost calendar of the 1775 Bible isn't just about turning back the clock. It's about finding a way forward that honors both ancient wisdom and modern needs. Imagine starting your year in March, aligning with the natural renewal of spring. Imagine recognizing Sunday as the true first day of the week, filled with the energy of the sun and new beginnings. Imagine celebrating holidays not by arbitrary dates, but by celestial events that connect us to the cosmos. This isn't just a theoretical exercise. There's a growing movement of people who are seeking to realign with natural cycles. Farmers are rediscovering lunar planting guides. Spiritual communities are reconnecting with solstice celebrations. And more and more people are looking up to the sky, not just for answers, but for guidance. By exploring these ancient perspectives, we can begin to piece together a more holistic view of time, one that honors the connections between celestial events and human activities. The implications of reconnecting with these ancient rhythms extend beyond personal spirituality and into the realms of environmental sustainability and mental health. Studies have shown that spending time in nature and following natural cycles can reduce stress, improve mental well-being, and foster a sense of connection to the environment. By realigning our lives with natural cycles, even in small ways, we might find not only personal balance, but also a renewed respect for the planet. So are we ready to reevaluate our relationship with time? The 1775 Bible's alternative calendar offers a glimpse into a world where timekeeping wasn't just about marking days, it was about connecting with the cosmos. It's a reminder that our modern calendar, with its rigid structure and arbitrary starting points, might not be the only way, or the best way, to measure time. This isn't about abandoning modern life or rejecting all of our technological advances. It's about finding ways to integrate ancient wisdom into our modern world. Whether it's starting your week with Sunday, celebrating the start of the year in March, or simply being more mindful of the moon's phases, these small shifts can have a profound impact on how we live. They can help us reconnect with a natural rhythm that feels both ancient and deeply relevant. The journey into the 1775 Bible's calendar is more than a historical exploration. It's a call to rediscover the wisdom of our ancestors. In a world where time is often seen as a commodity, taking a moment to reflect on alternative ways of measuring, it can be a powerful act of reconnection. It's about tuning into the rhythms of the universe, embracing the lessons of the past, and finding harmony in the simple act of knowing when the sun rises and sets, when the moon waxes and wanes, and when the seasons turn. So next time you glance at your calendar, consider the possibility that there might be another way, one that's more in tune with the world around you, whether it's starting your year with the promise of spring or recognizing the true order of days in the week, these small shifts in perspective could be the key to unlocking a deeper, more meaningful connection to time itself. After all, if the 1775 Bible, translated from the original Greek and based on even older traditions, could hold such insights, who's to say what else we might uncover by simply looking a little closer at the world we think we know?